Mood. Some of you have asked if I'm still taking my Japanese classes, and I am. Some of you wanted to see me in my class, but I don't really feel comfortable asking my teachers if I can film during their classes. It's a free class, so I'm lucky to even be able to go. But I can talk a little about what I've been learning. My second week there, my teacher let me know that all of the other students had already gone through chapter 14 of a book called Nina no Nihongo. She had a spare copy that she didn't use. She doesn't use it because it's in Romanji, which if you're studying Japanese, you know that you need to get out of using Romanji as fast as possible. And it just hinders you if you're still trying to use Romanji and you already know the hiragana and katakana, which I already know. I was just happy to get a free copy of the book. I, of course, can give it back to her after the class is over. So I just went through chap to chapter 14 to see all of the vocabulary that all of the other students know that I haven't learned. And I think there were about, I don't know, like something like 300 vocab words that I hadn't learned before. But I'm a pretty fast learner when it comes to vocab because I just am able to memorize things quickly. And so I just, what I did is I just took all of those words that I didn't know and I put it into my Anki file. And if you don't know what the Anki file is, it's a really good program. It's like a computer flashcard program. So it's pretty effective. And I think I've already caught up on a lot of, most of the voc vocab probably. So I don't really feel that behind in my class. Basically, mostly what we've been learning so far has been like connecting two sentences with the different forms and then some other things here and there. We were going over ta form yesterday, but there's there are so many different ways to connect sentences. Like the week previous to that, we learned it with te form, Nai form. Last week we also learned how to say like I must do something or I don't have to do something. And basically each week we get these little handouts that they print off from something. I'm not really sure. Maybe another Mina no Nihongo book. There are these really cute little pictures. So you're supposed to say in Japanese, this morning I got up, I took a shower, I ate breakfast, I went to school, I studied Japanese, I played tennis, I returned home, I listened to music, I studied, I watched TV, I read a book, and I went to sleep. And while I'm talking about studying, I guess I'll show you some of the other books and things that I use. Now, when I was back in America, I took Beginning Japanese for one quarter, and the book that we use is a book called Japanese, the Spoken Language. It's a pretty good book. It's okay, except it's all in Romanji. It has no hiragana, no katakana, no kanji at all. Um, but it is meant, you know, to teach the spoken language, not the written language Japanese. But it does, it, it's kind of annoying, and they write it in the old Romanji system, so like, instead of tu, T-S-U, they'll write just T-U, you know, instead of she, S-H-I, they'll just write S-I. Chi is T-I instead of C-H-I, uh, what are some of the others? There's a couple more, um, so it's just, it's kind of annoying, the Romaji aspect of it, but it has some pretty good drills in it, and I can't remember how far I got in my class, I think we went up to like chapter 7 or something like that, 
Another book that you probably have heard of if you are studying Japanese, which I would highly recommend, is Remembering the Kanji by James Haysig or Haysig. I haven't been studying it as much as I should be lately. Uh, I'm only on like chapter 17, so I've learned 369 kanji. And there are a total of 2,039 kanji in this. So if you go through the whole book, you'll know quite a good number of kanji. Um, and basically it just tells you little like stories, visual stories, so you can remember how to write the kanji easier. The one thing that this book doesn't teach is the Japanese pronunciation of the kanji. It tells you, you know, the vocab in English, but he does this on purpose because he doesn't want to heed your learning how to write and recognize the kanji. He knows that you can just learn the Japanese pronunciation later on. So it's not a big deal for me. I can just look it up if I need to myself. And basically how I study with that book is I also use the Anki once again. I have all the kanji in there and then it comes up and I say in my head what does it mean and then I also write the kanji. I first started out not writing the kanji as I was going along. I realized later on that that was a mistake. So I started writing the kanji and basically I just, you know, like write out a bunch of different kanji on paper over and over and it works pretty well. I should note that it's probably not something you should start learning from if you already know a lot of kanji. It's meant for the beginner because if you already have other kind of like stories you've made up for yourself then it's going to kind of hinder you on learning them from the book. Last but not least, I use my Japanese coach a little bit. I heard about this game from a friend of mine and she's Chinese but she's fluent in English and she knows quite a bit of Japanese and she said that this game is good so I trusted her opinion and it was on sale for like 20 bucks on Amazon or something like that so I went ahead and ordered it and I was very impressed. It gives you a little quiz at the beginning, like a placement test, so you can skip ahead some lessons. And it rates you as you go along, like you start off as a baby and then you become, I can't remember all the steps, but you know, you can be a like first grader, second grader, fourth grader, and I'm not sure how far it goes. But there are a lot of lessons. There are over like a thousand lessons, I think. And where am I on here? Looks like I'm on lesson 48. And I think it does a pretty good job teaching. It was developed by a bunch of Japanese teachers, so they probably hopefully know what they were doing. And it actually explained particles pretty well. I actually understood particles better from this game than I did with my teacher back in America. I'll try to maybe show an example of this. I guess I'll show you lesson one, which I didn't, I skipped over when I started the game. And yeah, you're taught by this little Japanese person in a kimono here. Okay, so like it'll teach you good is E. E. Bad. Dame. Hi. Ie. Konnichiwa. And then you can like test your voice with it. Um, by like recording it here. And you can practice writing it. I'm looking through my camera, so... <laughs> um, anyway, yeah, it's pretty cool. It comes with a 
phrase book and a dictionary, Japanese to English and English to Japanese, so that's pretty cool. I mean, it's not as good as an electronic dictionary, of course. It doesn't have nearly the vocab that it should, but for just getting around little things,、um, it's pretty helpful. I'm not sure what more advanced Japanese learners would think of it. If you know a lot of Japanese and you've had experience playing my Japanese coach, let me know if you think it's a good game. I think for the price, it's a really good deal. I think that's all. That's all of the methods that I use. I'm definitely not the best person to ask about studying Japanese since I am. Not fluent in it, but I've gotten a couple of questions, so I thought I'd just tell you a little bit about how I study. Alright, hope that helps someone. Bye!